Well, I told you we stopped by a history museum in Miyoshi. Miyoshi. After our aborted trip to Ashitakayama, where we found this looks like a hunting blind, he begun Japanese Bigfoot stick structure. Miyoshi, lovely town, population 53,000. Historically a key hub between north and south and east and west. You can probably guess why, just looking at the town. Well, I know someone is asking, Hey Kyle, how many old castles in Miyoshi? Population 53,000. Well, I can tell you. I have that information here. 41. 41 castle ruins in this town. Yeah, you could live up here and spend your whole life exploring and metal detecting and mapping and and you might never even get around to all 41. A lot of history. So we rolled up to this little history museum. We looked around and I found an old scroll. Not so old. 1749. It has this beautiful and beautifully preserved painting of a giant bipedal primate. Clearly a primate with big feet. Look at that big foot. And hands with opposable thumbs. What else? He's got really long arms. Long arms. Long armed beast. And he's grabbing a guy. Reminds me of this painting here. Fantasy? Or did this artist hear about a large bipedal primate with big feet and hands and long arms living in the mountains in Japan right here in Hiroshima Prefecture? way, way back in 1749 when Japan was a closed-off country with no knowledge of the outside world, certainly no knowledge of African fauna. Now remember the lesson of the oyster, this medieval oyster right here. It is an oyster, that's for sure. The poor artist just had never, well, he never actually had seen an oyster before. So he was doing his best, but working under that handicap. Well, I'm going with the non-fantastical origin because we know that Japan has these large bipedal primates called Bigfoot, or Sasquatch, or Hibigon, or Satori, or Yamabito, or Ohito, or Enko. We know they have a history of grabbing guys and girls, maybe especially girls. We know that when these creatures got especially rowdy, that uh, real historical emperors sent real armies commanded by real historical generals on extermination campaigns. We know that honest, well-meaning, hard-working artists do their best but they're kind of prone to adding sensational features like on this oyster here. They can't help it. Don't blame them. 
They're artistic. That's just what they do. So, overall, I think our artist here has done a great job with this creature. He has added a feature. And I'll unblur this photo now. And Well, let's see if you can catch it. Let's see how sharp-eyed you are. Here we go. Did you catch it? That's right. Yep. Our imaginative artist has added fangs. Our type specimen, cadaver, clearly has no fangs. Its teeth are human in shape and number, just not in size. Now that third eye, you might also have noticed, I am willing to bet that that is a reference to the creature's much-touted ability to read minds, as if he had a third eye. Not intended literally, I'm sure, so I can accept that. But those fangs are all wrong. Well, nevertheless, good try. Anonymous Japanese artist. Yet another piece of evidence that the old-time Japanese had and, and knew that they had large, hairy, bipedal primates running around these forests and mountains, sometimes grabbing people. Not to be confused with these little guys. But... Tell me what you think. The text is illegible to modern Japanese. Reading old Japanese is a rare skill. Here's an English text in 17th century secretary hand, and not many of us could read that. But I'm going to pass this to our friendly calligraphy clerk, and see if she can make anything out of it. Okay, I have two or three more drawings, new stuff that I want to show you. But uh, for now, have a great day. And I'll probably see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay, that was a very obliging nail. It was right in the plug. And we put that plug back. Looks like nobody was here. There's the nail. Oops. And two nice pieces of pottery.